Life can be overwhelming, especially when it feels like it's going by so fast. But as we approach a new year, we're given the opportunity to reflect on the days that have passed and really take a moment to let it all sink in. It usually doesn't take long to see how rewarding the year actually was and how many precious moments that were given to us to experience. And then, suddenly, life doesn't seem so overwhelming after all. Instead, it seems, well, beautiful. So come along with me as we recap 2023 and the moments that made up my year. The good times, the silly ones, the struggles, and everything in between. I can't promise that it will be perfect, but as a quote by Dina Metzer says, Beauty appears when something is completely and absolutely and openly itself. When we allow life to just be without the pressures of restricting thought, we realize that even the most simple of things remain long-lasting in our hearts. I can honestly say that some of my most memorable moments from 2023 were time spent out in nature. How was it that this year held within its seasons so many beautiful scenes to capture? In the stillness and quiet of nature's embrace, I found myself once more, and I remember that with the coming of spring, I reawakened my creativity and my soul came alive again. This energy stayed with me as I continued to seek out new opportunities to be out in nature and see it in all new kinds of ways. My garden and flowers and plants gave me something to nurture and care for, which is such a great way to balance life and devote your time and efforts towards something other than yourself. Something that is just selfless and also so rewarding. Everything grew so well this year, and I was amazed at how nature thrived all around me. And it just offered this feeling of hope, because no matter how bad things got around in this world, nature, the trees, the flowers, oh, there were so many wildflowers this year, the lakes, the mountains, it all just found a way to not only exist, but to be the best version of itself. And that really spoke to me and served as a great reminder that we're all unique. Certainly we're all beautiful in our own way, but we do ourselves the most justice when we strive to be the best versions of ourselves and when we fall in love with that whole process. And every day we're given this opportunity and every day I found inspiration in this very thought. A yearly recap video just wouldn't be complete without clips from our travels and destinations. So let's take a look at some of the moments that will truly be unforgettable, because as St. Augustine so famously wrote, the world is a book and those who do not travel read only one page.
David loves travel and has more experience with it than I do. I'm a bit of a homebody, but David really has spurred in me more of an interest in exploring new places and opening up to the adventure of travel. We had a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to visit the Grand Bahamian Sandals Resort when David won the all-expense-paid vacation to this all-inclusive resort through his workplace because he's just that awesome. Truly though, his hard work and dedication really paid off for us, and this was a trip I'll never forget, and one of the most beautiful and exotic destinations I've traveled to. Our honeymoon cruise was also a beautiful trip, and the ship we were aboard was really impressive and made our time all the more memorable. In between our vacations, David and I also scheduled in as many day trips as we could, visiting new state parks and making effort to cross them off our list as we're working on visiting all of the state parks in Georgia, as well as historic sites, coastlines, and places of interest along the way. I hadn't foreseen an opportunity for an autumn trip this year, but was pleasantly surprised when David booked us an Airbnb in Middle Georgia, a part of the state we hadn't previously explored or visited. This area was really scenic and boasted of beautiful landscapes and rolling foothills, with plenty of state parks to see and a gorgeous botanical garden to explore. Callaway Gardens in the fall is so perfect because the weather is ideal, it's not overly crowded, and they have a large pumpkin festival and lighted forest walk featuring charming woodland critters and pumpkins everywhere you look. It's really a magical and festive exhibit and a place I'd love to see again one day. When we travel, we go by way of our Jeep Sandy, a 2016 Willis Wheeler. Compact and comfortable, Sandy's Jeep Heritage can handle various terrain, off-road excursions, and can turn on a dime, making it the perfect adventure wagon. Yet, we often avoid taking roads that are highly known for precarious situations and or mud, because when it comes to our off-roading ambitions, we tend to play it safe. One of our goals is to one day finish the construction of a pull-behind trailer that will house a pop-up tent and allow us to take Sandy on camping exhibitions, and then maybe, when better equipped, we'll feel more ambitious to try ultimate off-roading adventures. There's always room for expanding our options as new opportunities await on the horizon. By far the most significant adventure for David and I this year was our wedding, which took place in the beautiful month of May. We decided not to drag out our engagement after David proposed October of 2022 in a romantic location during a mountain getaway, which little did I realize would become one of the best and most sacred vacations of my life. Within just six short months, we were ready to say our vows and start the next chapter of our adventure a life together as husband and wife. We had a fairy tale wedding, perfect, simple, right at home, and with our closest loved ones around us. Looking back at these moments, I still find it unbelievable as I'm overcome with joy at the reminder of the blessings, just such overwhelming blessings that life hands us sometimes, and how lucky I am to be on the receiving end of it. It's often said that life is about the people you meet and that home is created by who it inhabits. While I agree with this, I have to say that as an introvert, it's easy for me to downplay the importance of people in my life and sometimes forget to make moments like that that matter. I can go longer than others can, not seeing friends or family. I've always been good at occupying myself and I guess I do alone time well. 
But relationships are important. And in looking back over this year, I find so much wisdom in these words by Walt Whitman that maybe you can carry into this new year as well and find helpful. Life doesn't give you the people you want. It gives you the people you need to love you, to hate you, to make you, and to break you, and to make you the person you were meant to be. So next time someone leaves you disappointed, don't grieve or be dismayed because it's all part of the journey and how people impact your life in that time. Part of looking back over a year is self-reflecting and observing personal growth. Everything that we came into contact with, every one, contributes to who we are and what we become, and it plays a role and further shapes us. Experiences cause us to adapt, sometimes to overcome. There was a period of time in this year that I was very quiet and reflective in my own head because I lost a very loved and dear friend of mine. This was something that David and I both suffered from greatly, and there was a lot of heartache from it. But we had each other, and honestly, amidst the grief was celebration, amidst the loss was gain. And I guess that's why it said that life is like two sides of a coin. It's a give and take. But on inner reflection, and during the times when I felt sad or lonely, I was able to realize that we're only given one life. And instead of pursuing how to be more like what we see, we should strive to be more unique and more like ourselves. The temptation to imitate is all around us, and there's always going to be the appearance that someone else does it better. But hey, maybe the world needs the way we do it instead. Maybe my way is the right way, or at least good enough and acceptable. A person may their whole lives be in search of identity, never really finding themselves or knowing who or what they want to be. But one thing we can accomplish yet today is to make up our minds to be ourselves because there's only one you. So be the best you that you can be. I can't remember if I already told you earlier that I'm a homebody, but it's true. I work from home and thrive at just being home. I've only been living in this cottage, my new home, since marrying David in May, and already it feels like where I belong. I got right to it with nesting and putting personal touches on every corner of this cozy two-bedroom, two-bath cottage in the woods. And we even had the chance to decorate it in celebration of our first Christmas as a married couple. Oh, what blessings this year has brought, and what joy has come with owning our own home and having the safe space to come back to and leave out from. It's true what they say, that home isn't just a place, it's a feeling. Having said all about my year, I come now to this, surely not least of all, but with sincerity and conviction, I ask as well as state, where, oh where, would we be without the love and grace of Jesus? For but the grace of God was I able to be granted with such a joyful and blessed year, full of opportunity and cherished memories made. God is absolutely good. And I'm so thankful for the growth in my spiritual walk this year. I prioritize my faith and my relationship with God. And now as a wife and a homeowner, I feel and know it is my responsibility to maintain my faith walk with God and be a prayer warrior for my husband and I and for our home life. 
God has shown me so many things in 2023 about myself and about Him. The love of the Father, the Holy Trinity, Jesus' perfect sacrifice, and a love that covers all. There's always more to learn, new ways to grow and develop your faith walk in Christianity. My faith was really tested like never before this year when a wrist injury plagued me for nearly six months. After I injured my wrist, a stress fracture to my dominant hand, I was unable to carry on with life as normal. I was no longer able to work or make a living for myself, but David and my family really stepped up and helped me in so many ways during this oppressive months. I wasn't sure if my wrist would ever heal. It was getting worse and worse, and I was wearing a brace but living in pain every day. But I believed that my healing was already bought and paid for by Christ's sacrifice on the cross, and that by Jesus' stripes I'm already healed. So, by faith, I accepted that, and I daily decreed my healing, standing on God's word. I was able to share my testimony along the way with others, and I'm happy that I can share it now again with you, because I believed God to be the perfect physician, and in time I was miraculously healed, restored, and good as new. In fact, I believe that my wrist was healed back stronger than ever. I never did go to a doctor. But I did consult with my chiropractor and underwent a few holistic practices, but ultimately, I believe my faith brought the healing through Jesus. I was so happy to finally get to go back to work once again and pick up where I had left off. And now I'm happy to be starting a new series on this channel, where hopefully I'll be sharing Bible stories and passages from God's Word to further spread the gospel and help advance new believers to the acceptance of Jesus as their own personal Savior. Going forward, I'm renewed by a sense of accomplishment as I look over this year, and I'm optimistic that I can better my videos and vlogs and continue to bring you content that will hopefully inspire and encourage you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for being on this YouTube journey with me. I know it's often said how much we appreciate viewers, but I just wish I could somehow demonstrate how much it means to me truly through the words to define it, though they fall away somehow. Maybe it's best spoken in the ways that John F. Kennedy coined when he said that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. So I pray that my vlogs will speak for themselves and show you my gratitude and thankfulness. See you in 2024, my lovelies. New beginnings, new adventures, and new opportunities await.